Hey guys, this is Mark coming to you from Thor. Uh, so today we're going to be showing you the IRD V3. Uh, we've been getting a lot of questions about some applications regarding anything from ATSC to IP, RF to SDI, uh, and so on. And so I'm going to show you a particular unit that we've been uh, using for a long time to show you these sorts of applications. It's down here in the RF IRD section. And I'm going to show you the ATSC model right here. And the first thing I want to show you is that this unit is a single 1RU rack mount. There's a little window right here that you can use a red button to actually watch the live decoding of video. And on the back, here's a lot of inputs and outputs with RF, ASI, uh, USB, HDMI, uh, CVBS, baseband. There's also SDI, uh, network management, and your forward uh, uh, Ethernet port for your IPTV output, XLR for audio, power supply. And so a lot of people kind of get confused because there's so many inputs and outputs. And you can see here, we have several models that show the actual RF standard that you can use to decode certain signals. Uh, but the most important thing I wanted to show you was kind of this screen right here that shows you on this particular model, which is ATSC, that you can do a loop out with your RF in. So it has an ATSC tuner, the IPTV out, uh, and, and uh, DVB ASI, HDSDI, which is really important, HDMI, composite, and YPBPR is all out. So essentially, this is a very flexible unit. It's almost like a Swiss Army knife. And it allows you to put in a variety of signals and pull out a variety of signals. And this is really important because some people have predicaments and are not sure what to do or uh, where to go with everything. So this is just uh, an easy way to explain. So for this particular application, the ATSC DVBS or QAM can go in and you can receive simultaneous IPTV, ASI and HDSDI or HDMI outputs. Uh, it's really flexible, it's really unique and it's a cool way to actually pull out uh, multiple options uh, from your video input. Right, I'm going to go ahead and show you in a series of videos how to do all this stuff and you have other options here as far as IPTV in and then you can pull your SDI out uh, and so on and so forth. And so this is a really great unit. We've been selling it for years uh, and it's really kind of cool and easy to use. So I'm going to show you a lot of different functionalities of this because when people do have interesting dilemmas like an RF input with an SDI out, this is the unit we always point them to because there's not many units that can actually do that. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys this, uh, this video of me actually using the unit itself. What to do was set up an ASI source to do that. Uh, what we did was use an HDMI RF modulator in this scenario. We're gonna be using the four HDMI ADHD model, which is right here. Uh, it's been an excellent unit for us for a long time. And as you can see, it has HDMI and component composite inputs, ASI in and ASI out. So it is an ASI multiplexer as well. So we're going to go into this unit, which is the 480HD. We're going to log in. I'm going to make sure we have some video present. And I think we do have a DVD running in there. And as you can see, we do have a green light and it's going at 38 megs, just under 38 megs. All right. So then we go to our V3 IRD, we log in. And while this loads, we're gonna be able to see here on the status menu, we have an ASI input with a green light and we're streaming at about 38 megabits per second, which is exactly what we had over here. So that is flowing seamlessly from one encoder to the IRD. So to set up the IPTV output in this scenario, uh, we're gonna go to general to set it up. We're gonna select ASI as a decoder and the output mode, you can go IP, uh, IP bypass. We can, we're gonna do MUX. I just think this is a better way to actually complete this particular application, uh, specifically because ASI generally carries multiple programs. Uh, very rarely do you see an ASI with just one program. Usually it has many, many programs. So the MUX option actually allows us to uh, select. And here is the MPTS for multi-program transport stream. You can set this up if you guys need that instead. Uh, but we're gonna go to the MUX option here, which I just discussed. We're gonna click on ASI. We're gonna parse. 
and the unit is now reading the entire ASI stream. And it's going to give us a list of options. And since we have, I believe, just one signal going in, or it might be two, but we do have a valid signal in there. So I'm just going to grab the one. I'm going to move it over. And now you can see that we have the what should be the DVD now running in the MUX. So we're going to go to SPTS. We're going to enable that. And now we're going to see that it's set up on UDP 224.222 and port 1001, but there's no bit rate. So we're going to go and set that up. I'm going to set it up to 40, which is just above the 38 we had rolling. And again, it's set up for UDP on port 1001. We're going to set, set again. And now we are ready to stream our IP. And so to do that, we're going to use a good old program called VLC. And now I'm going to drag and drop this VLC over here. We're going to open up the network. And instead of 1003, we're going to go 1001, where the port was that we just showed, and hit play. And this should drag uh, the video right in. And sure enough, it does. It's just, uh, okay. And it looks like they are showing today a movie called Football Factory, uh, which is an excellent film. If you guys ever have a chance, go check it out. Um, and that's about it. That's that's how easy it is to take ASI, decode it, and start streaming to IP. And you can see that the, the picture quality is excellent. It's DVD quality and 1080. And it's, it's really great. It's really easy to do. So that, that's pretty much how easy it is to set up your system for ASI to IP. I'm gonna show you guys how to do an ATSC to IP application uh, using our IRD v3. Recently we've had a slew of inquiries and questions about how to do this for various applications, whether it's a ski resort, a hotel, or a casino, whatever it might be. Uh, so I'm gonna show you guys briefly how to do this. So to log in, you just use the NMS GUI, uh, is obviously the IP address is right there, which is standard on this particular unit. And you can log in. I'm gonna go ahead and let this load, but before we start, I'm gonna go ahead and go to config and do a factory reset so I can show you guys with a clean slate how to set this up and how to use it. So it's pretty basic as far as the status shows. As you can see, there's nothing going on right now until we change a couple things. So right now I'm gonna pull in a new ATSC stream. <clears throat> and to show you guys how to do that, uh, there's this really cool site uh, called nocable.org. So if you just go to it.org, uh, you can go ahead and check out wherever you guys are via zip code. We're in Torrance, California. So it'll just pull up all the stations that are local here from CBS, NBC, CW, ABC. Uh, so this unit is going to not only pull in the RF channel, but it's going to pull in all the sub programs too. So if you see a sub channel in there, or K KTLA has three sub channels, it's going to ingest all those and convert all those into IP streams for you. Or if you're doing multicast, it'll send multicast. Uh, just to be, we're going to go ahead and use NBC here, which is 602. So we're actually going to use frequency 605 to hit the middle part of the frequency in a six megahertz step. Go ahead and click setup. And the unit is gonna scan right away looking for some data. And there you go, it's showing some data. The signal quality is okay. And be careful about the quality. You're gonna to wanna to hit at least 30%. Uh, this over the air antenna I have hooked up to the unit is literally just sitting on the windowsill uh, in my office. So it's nothing special. It's a really cheap and easy to use antenna you can find pretty much anywhere online. Um, and here you can see that we're already pulling in a good data, data rate. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna set it up. The decoder is set up for tuner, but the output mode we wanna use IP. So I'm gonna set it up to the MUX function. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Uh, there's a lot of different various components in here to play around with. Um, and it's fairly simple. It's an intuitive GUI. Uh, I think our guys have done a really good job designing this. Uh, here's the MPTS multicast stuff. The MUX options are in here. Uh, that you can always pull in. 
uh, and then we're going to show you the SPTS. I'm going to enable this. I'm going to get the streams rolling. I think I have to mux it first because it's. I forgot I clicked mux in the beginning. So we're going to get the mux rolling. And right now it's just going to pull all the different RF uh, data that's actually going into the unit right now. And again, I just have a simple over-the-air antenna connected right into the back of the IRD. This V3 IRD uh, is specifically made just for ATSC. They are RF modulation dependent if you are going to order them. Uh, and here you can see that we have some programs. And we're going to send them over. And you can see that there are going to be two different programs here. Okay. And so now when we go back to SPTS, here they are. Okay. So this should be the first program. We're going to set this up for 19, which is what we saw on the status screen. And you can set up your different ports, UDP, RDP. Uh, we're going to leave it on 1001. It's simple enough. I'm going to set this one up too so I can show you guys how that will look. Make sure you click enable, set, and it should be rolling. So to check, I'm going to use a very basic program. I'm going to swing it over here to the other side. And this is, as you can see, just simply VLC player. And we're going to just hit in a one. And immediately it's pulling in, what do we have here? Kelly Clarkson show. You can see the UDP was right there, and it's immediately going to start pulling in your channel. You can see, I have no idea what's going on in the show. Not necessarily my cup of tea. But as we were, I'm going to show you now the next stream, which was simply ended in 02. So I've been teaching for six years, and it's always a challenge every... Um... And this was the sub-channel, or a minor, if you will, on the RF channel that we're now streaming in. And realistically, what that means is that uh, when you actually pick up over-the-air channels, you're going to pick up more than just one channel. That's usually how it's set. Uh, and this is something that TV stations will do. It's easier for them to send out multiple channels. Here you can see it has two on Fox. Um, and it works pretty much with every single one of them. So it's just a quick and easy way to pull in off-air channels, convert them to IP addresses. In this case, we did UDP. You can also do RTP. You can send multicast. And this particular unit is actually pretty great, the V3, because you can actually input ASI, IP, or RF, and you can output um, uh, ASI, IP, uh, and a couple other different things. So uh, it's actually a really cool unit to play around with. Again, you can just mix and match all the different channels you want. And again, guys, make sure that you're matching your data rates consistently and looking at your quality signal. And I'll show you guys here on the website. You go to thorbroadcast.com, scroll down to IRD, and the unit I'm showing you right now is actually this one right here. And as you can see, it has a slew of input and output options on the back. I just put the RF uh, right in the back right here and RF in, IP out through the FE. And that NMS that I was using, this GUI, is connected. And make sure when you are using the units, they are in different subnets. The NMS and the IP output have to be on different subnets. So if you guys have any questions or like some more information about these, you can always reach out to us. Uh, all of our information is here on the website. All right, thanks for stopping by and hopefully you guys learned something new today.